Ladies and germs, what is going on? This is your boy Squig coming at you with the very first episode of Squig's Podcast. Name probably needs a little work, but we're just going to run with that for now, okay? So, today I want to talk about the head of household. The reason why I chose this topic to be my first topic of discussion, I said topic a lot, because I hear a lot about that on YouTube, on the tube of the U. And I'm like, I I listen to some of the people and then I just start laughing. Okay. I I laugh because of like certain things they say is just ridiculous. But before I get into that, um, please hit the like button for your boy. Show some love, man. Push the little, little thumbs up button. And then if you agree with what I say, or even if you don't agree with what I say, um, at the end of the podcast, just, you know, put it in the comment section, which we disagreed about or what you enjoyed about the podcast what could be better you know if you loved it all you know because that would really help me become a better podcaster okay i like to talk and i also like to help as well okay so listen now back to the topic at hand head of household if you are i want to be very very clear when i say this if you are a christian man and woman oh gosh And you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that he died for our sins. I am talking to you. If you do not believe that. Then it's it's up to you. Okay, I'm just saying if you're trying to live a holy Christian filled life, then this message is for you. By the way, Christians are not perfect. Okay, we do make mistakes. I will get into that later. But. As far as the head of household situation, here we go. I got a couple of scriptures I wanted to read. Um, The first one is 1 Corinthians 11.3. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband. And the head of Christ is God. Ephesians 5.22-24. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now, this part is just for the ladies. I will get to the husbands later. Um, it tells you right there. But I know there's a few people that would probably take this literally. This does not mean to submit to every man you run across. I know there are probably some people that will tell you that that is not what it's saying. And that's also not saying that you should have two different identities. Like you should be one way when you're boyfriend, girlfriend, and then you should be another way when you're a wife. No, you should be one way across the board. There's just certain things that, you know, you should do as a, as a wife. Okay. Now we all know, Ain't not one person in this. I know that's probably not a word. <laughs> Ain't nobody in this world perfect. We all going to do what it is we want to do when we want to do it, blah, blah, blah. But we can't get mad at the problems that come along with it. By that, I mean having kids out of wedlock. Um, having sex before marriage. Those kind of things come with consequences. Now, like I said before, I am not perfect. I didn't have my kid until after I got married, but I was doing the deal before I got married. Yes, sir. So, (laughs) um, like I said before, we are all not perfect, but we try our best to stay in the word. I just happen to be lucky enough to marry the person who is the mother of my kids. You know, I'm I just got lucky. Okay, blessed. Uh, I'm not going to say lucky. I got blessed. Okay. Um, So, yeah. Like, as a wife, your job is to submit to your husband. Support his decisions and go from there. That does not mean you bend over backwards for everything he says. Hey, look, go do this for me. Go. If he is a jerk, then no, God is not telling you to do that. Don't know. Like, the man is supposed to have 
respect for you, which is what I'm about to get into with this next scripture. First Peter chapter three, verse seven. Likewise, husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are uh, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. Just because they are the weaker vessels does not mean that you take advantage to be a great leader, to be a king. And you have to have respect in your household, in your castle, whatever you want to call it. If you want true respect, you don't rule because you're the bigger person. You're the stronger person. No, you rule out of respect because that person respects your decisions. Those people they were those people when you lead out of respect people tend to follow you a lot better than if you was to control them you know mentally or whatever i choose to lead my household with respect and love that's how i raise my kids well that's how me and my wife raise our kids and i don't i don't care the fact that i'm six three and she's five two Oh, well, you do as I say, blah, blah. No, it don't work like that. I will never, never abuse my physical dominance over that because the way life is set up, I may end up swallowing a couple teeth. Not from her, but life is going to hit me. I mean that literally and physically. That's just how it works. Karma will come back to bite you in the butt. I choose to lead out of respect. I love my wife and I respect my wife. I will never treat her any differently just because I'm stronger than her. Not just physically, mentally, stuff like that. Then I got another scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 40. I'm not going to read all 40 verses. I am just going to break it down. Um, it says the husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights. Conjugal rights be given up. The, well as the female giving up the booty okay that's what conjugal means giving up the booty doing the do the nasty and likewise the wife to her husband for the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband does likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body but the wife does do not deprive one another, <clears throat> except if you agree for a limited time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he says that because when you start depriving your partner of that, the lack of sexual attention, they tend to seek it from somewhere else. Which is why he says so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. It's easy for Satan to come in when, you know, you just push the door wide open. Hey, look, I look, I ain't going to be doing nothing with you. So I'm not ready or my back hurts. My toe hurts. I don't know. My left boob hurt or something or a guy. He just don't feel like I, I don't know. Whatever the situation is, you should not be holding out. Simple. Because if something was to happen, it's your fault. Plain and simple, whether you want to agree with it, oh, well, you should you should have better self-control. I've been holding out for a goddamn month, man. How long you want me to wait? I got the cheat tree here in front of me. I can't do nothing. Or I got the eggplant right here. Ah, gosh, that don't sound right. But I got the eggplant right here in front of me. What's going on? Like, how long are you going to keep holding out on me? So it's our job as the men of the household to protect our wives, our loved ones. Not to sit there and, you know, just be like, all right, hey, look, I'll let you take over, bro. Like, there's a reason for that. Okay, God made us the head for a reason. That's to protect because we are better providers. We are and, and I don't mean I don't I don't mean providers as just financially. Please don't don't don't, don't twist it what I say. I don't mean to be a provider financially because i can provide for my wife in every way shape and form that comes down to the bedroom that comes down to mentally she may not 
like she may not be feeling when I be trying to correct her in certain things, but she respects it at the end of the day. That's what it all boils down to. She don't like it, but she respects it. Now she don't like it, you know. You know, I ain't got no complaint. Oh, it. But that's another story for another day. The point of the situation is wives submit to your husbands. Husbands, don't be dirtbag to your wives. That's how it's supposed to go. But the way everything is going now, it's shifting to money. It's all about the dollar. I got more money, so I'm in control. That's controlling with money. That's like mind games. That's not true leadership. That's why there's problems in a lot of relationships because everybody thinks that it's all about money. And it's not. Money helps. It brings happiness to some degree. But if money made everybody happy, then everybody, then millionaires would not be taking their own lives in relationships. Obviously, there's other things going on. Even if they're not in relationships, if I'm happy, don't get me wrong. Give me a Bentley or something. Give me, give me a mansion. I'll be happy too. But it won't be complete happiness. It's only temporary. So that's really all I got to say about the situation. Um, if you guys enjoyed the podcast, please hit the like button for your boy. Like I said, this, this is my first one, so I'm sure there's a lot of mistakes in it. You know, if I'm too loud or if I'm too low, the kids in the background making too much noise. Don't worry, I'll situate that next time. Cracks knuckles. Ah, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't put my hands on my kids. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So thank you guys for those who have stuck around. I don't really know how to end the video, so we'll have to end the podcast. So I'm just going to end it right here. Deuces.